at this point in time, there is an unprecedented amount of hype surrounding Ipswich Town. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a little bit of a deeper dive into Ipswich, their transfer dealings so far, and how we could realistically see them performing next season in the Championship. Guys, if you do going to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. I said we do a few more of these deeper dives into a few Championship clubs before the season begins. We've already gone ahead and done one on QPR and any other clubs that you'd like to see us having a little bit of a final look into, do let me know in the comments down below and why that would make for an interesting video. But I thought Ipswich would be the topic of conversation for today, going off their recent transfer dealings, got another transfer rumour in the pipeline which we'll speak about in today's video as well, but mostly because I just find the whole project absolutely fascinating right now. I can't remember the last time a team came up from League One with this much hype and backing surrounding them. Not even the Chris Wilder side I think that was promoted from League one to the championship had this much hype originally surrounding them when they were promoted. So what's the story with Ipswich Town and how did we get to this point? Well me growing up as a Preston North End fan I always associated Ipswich with being a mid-table championship club that's how I always saw them growing up as a North End fan. We were quite similar for a lot of the time um, that I had grown up but Ipswich were a championship club when the league was first rebranded to the league it is today in 2004 and they remained in the championship all the way up to 2019. Yes, there were a couple of promotion pushes during that time, but for the vast majority of it, which is time in the championship, they were a mid-table club who weren't regularly involved in relegation battles, but didn't have that many promotion pushes either. And it which were just your typical middle-of-the-road championship club where there weren't too many thrills or spills. All of that changed in the 2018-19 season, though. A lot of people will remember Ipswich parting company with Nick McCarthy the year before that, but things had started to go really stale at the club. They tried to freshen things up with a new group of players coming in, a new manager in Paul Hurst, but ultimately it was too much change too quickly. The back in financially wasn't there for this overall rebuild either. And Ipswich soon found themselves in a lot of trouble and were ultimately relegated in 24th place in the Championship. I do have quite a few memories of that season as well. Um, I remember reporting on it and you know doing these videos on the Championship and Ipswich were truly woeful that season. Finished the 18 slash 19 campaign having only won five of their 46 matches and only recruiting 31 points all season. What then followed after that were a couple of mid-table finishes in League One where they struggled to establish themselves as one of the top sides in the third tier. But the big game-changing moment for Ipswich came in April 2021 when their new ownership came in. Marcus Edwards had been at the helm since 2007 but it was time for some fresh ideas to come into the club. And with a fresh outlook on things under their American ownership, things quickly picked up in League One. In the 21-22 season, their squad was completely overhauled with 18 new signings. Although Paul Cook struggled to make things gel and ultimately lost his job in December 2021. Kieran McKenna took on the reins from that point onwards and Ipswich ended the season really strong and you could tell that the building blocks were starting to fall in place for a successful side in the third tier. Fast forward to the 22-23 season and even more backing goes into that Ipswich squad and Ipswich really just go from strength to strength under Kieran McKenna. Bulldozing teams along the way, Ipswich have a super Herb season with a miraculous end to the campaign, ultimately scoring over 100 goals and picking up 98 points in the process. Ipswich now have a spine of players who have championship experience behind them, and for a club in League One, they've also been willing to invest some pretty serious investments into their side, with the likes of Leif Davis and Nathan Broadhead both coming in for significant transfer fees. One quick glance over Ipswich's wage bill from last season shows just how much backing has gone into this squad by the new ownership. They're working with a wage bill going off the figures off salary spot that goes past several championship clubs from last season. There's no doubt that the aim at Ipswich last season was promotion and Kieran McKenna delivered just that with a great style of football along the way, a young squad which is willing to develop and learn which is backed up by regulars of championship years gone by. Where things continue to get exciting for Ipswich is how they've already started to invest in their squad ahead of this championship campaign. Jack Taylor became their first recruit of this summer transfer window, signed from Peterborough United for a fee in the region 
region of 1.5 million. Now, Taylor fits into the sort of recruitment strategy that Ipswich have had over these last couple of years, especially players who they have afforded a significant transfer fee for. Someone like Taylor with a really high ceiling, someone who looks more than capable of making that step up to Championship football, and someone who, in a few years' time, could quadruple in value for Ipswich. Last season in League One, he started all 46 games for Posh, scored nine goals, got six assists, and isn't afraid of getting stuck in either, racking up 11 yellow cards in total. Peterborough's chairman certainly had plenty to say on this one as well, claiming he'll propel Ipswich on a Premier League promotion push. The rest of the championship you've effed up again, like with the Ivan Tony deal when you could have come in and you didn't. Strong words there from the Peterborough chairman. But I think there is some truth behind that. Now the Jack Taylor transfer saga was an interesting one for Ipswich. At one point it seemed like the club had completely pulled out of this deal as Peterborough were demanding too much but I think once again that plays into how Ipswich won't be messed around. We know they have this financing behind them but they're not going to pay over the odds to get any of their primary transfer targets and if a club is asking for too much then they'll simply walk away and they won't pay an overinflated figure. Now regarding Ipswich's transfer dealings a very interesting transfer story broke the other day claiming that Ipswich had had a bid of £4 million rejected for Everton forward Ellis Sims. Now Sims is a player in hot demand at the moment it's no secret that Everton would perhaps be prepared to let him go this summer and plenty of championship clubs have registered an interest we've spoken about him plenty of times on the championship transfer room around up so far the likes of Sunderland Middlesbrough also interested however contrary to that report from Football Insider Stuart Watson one of the local journals from Ipswich did tweet this out understand reports that Ipswich have had a four million bid for Everton striker Ellis Sims rejected to be incorrect one of several strikers Ipswich are interested in and have made inquiries about football world knows Ipswich have money but the club won't pay over the odds I think that last line right there is absolutely crucial for how Ipswich have been run so far and how they won't be taken for mugs despite other clubs being well aware that there is that financial backing behind them at the moment. Now a lot of people, myself included, do think that the Championship will be very strong next season, certainly stronger than it has been in previous years. I think we've got three very capable sides coming up from League One as well as three sides which should all be competitive coming down from the Premier League as well. But many people are theorising that Ipswich are going to absolutely skyrocket from League one promotion right up to potentially a promotion charge in the championship next season. I think a reason behind a lot of that is the financial backing and strategy that Ipswich have in place right now. While the championship will be a very strong division next season I do think that there will be a sizable amount of clubs who won't be spending any real money this summer and will be relying on free transfers in the low market exclusively. And that right there is where Ipswich can set themselves ahead of the rest. Their clever recruitment coupled with that financial backing, a young hungry manager like Kieran McKenna who's desperate to prove himself at this level and already a spine of players who have played at this level previously, it makes for a dangerous combination. I always think a handy way to look into how much a side is being fancied is by looking into the promotion odds at the start of the season. Now the bookies never get things 100% spot on but it shows us where people are placing money and how much people are basically fancying a side to go up or go down as these obviously fluctuate based on how much money is being put on a particular side. And going off the championship promotion odds right now, Ipswich are currently fifth in the table based on those promotion odds, which is absolutely bonkers. I can't remember a time we last saw a side coming up from League One this high up in the promotion odds. They're even above local rivals Norwich right now. Now these prices did take quite the shift after Ipswich announced the Jack Taylor sign and no doubt if they do get a few more bodies, notable ones over the line, the promotion odds will continue to shift. But as things stand, the bookies have Leicester and Leeds as the favourites followed by Southampton and Middlesbrough and then Ipswich Town with promotion odds of four to one, which is just crazy to me. For context, the two sides that they were promoted alongside Sheffield Wednesday and Plymouth. Sheffield Wednesday currently have promotion odds of 18 to one and Plymouth 40 to one. Now it is worth saying that with all this hype, everything doesn't always fall into place. And we have, while not seen anything to this degree over the last few years, we have seen similar stories of sides coming up from League One and ultimately not being able to cut it in the league above. But I just think there's too many factors going in the favour of Ipswich right now that I'd be really surprised if that was the case. Of course we saw Sunderland last season recruiting very smartly, ultimately 
going on and finishing in the playoffs. And there's no reason why Ipswich can't follow a similar blueprint going into next season. It's a very exciting project and I can't wait to see what's next really. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this down below. Realistically, where are you placing Ipswich in the championship right now? Are you as hot on them as some of the bookies are? Do you think they will be in the top six? Or do you think it'll be a bit more of a gradual process of them adapting to the league above, sounding things out first, and it will be maybe a bit more of a mid-table finish? Or even, do you think they'll be scraping for their lives near the bottom of the table? Let me know down below because I'm very interested to hear some thoughts from you. But apart from that, guys, that will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Just a quick dive on Ipswich, my thoughts at the moment. I just think they're an absolutely fascinating club. Would love to get some Ipswich participation in the comments down below as well. But apart from that, that will wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.